Good afternoon, I'm Jeremy Grant. I work for the West Virginia Department of Agriculture and today we're going to go over some general uh, tractor safety and maybe give you a few tips on picking the right tractor for the right job. All right, today before we get started, some general tips that we want to do um, to keep you safe while you're out there on your tractor is just a good walk around the tractor. Make sure your maintenance is kept up with. Uh, to prevent injuries, the main thing is if you're as long as your tractor's in good working order, uh, that will keep you on the tractor, not in a rush, getting off, trying to fix something, and possibly injuring yourself. So today, walking around this tractor, you want to look for any visible leaks, make sure the tires look like they're up and properly inflated. You want to check the lights, make sure those are working, especially if you happen to be out on the main road driving, as a, as a good safety precaution, make sure those those are functioning. If we move back to the back of this tractor, uh, the implement today we just have is a hay rake, but to check the hydraulic oil and level, you can see in the sight glass back here um, that it's right in the right in the full range. So as long as you've got some oil there, now this may vary for different tractors. This happens to be a John Deere 5205, a smaller compact kind of utility tractor. Um, we're just using it to rake and Ted hay with primarily. Now, if you step on over to this side, here's where we can check the oil. Simple dipstick. Should have a rag, wipe it clean. And we're right at the, the add mark, but I just started it and I checked it earlier, it, it was fine. Uh, what I like to do when I change the oil on my tractors is take one of the ink pens, write the date on it. So I changed that one in May of 2020 and it had 2,552 hours. So just something good to keep in mind that way. Your fuel filter sits right here on the tractor. Um, and it'll say right on it periodically. You can drain, loosen that, and if there happened to be any water or sediment that gets in the bottom of your fuel filter, you can do that as well. Um, something that also you need to do is make sure, this may sound silly, but make sure that it's full of fuel before you get started. This tractor, the fuel gauge doesn't work, but uh, if you fill it up every day, uh, you, you, won't, you won't run this tractor out of fuel. So it's just something you kind of live and, and learn with. And, and depends on what you want to be able to afford. Now, coming on over here, as we climb on the tractor, I know it's easy and it's young, and, and you know, if you're young and it's, you want to jump on and off the tractor, but always maintain your three points of contact while, while getting on the tractor. If you climb on, be aware of all the operator controls, where your lights are, how to release the park brake, how to set the brake, and where your power takeoff is located. Typically, it will be a, le a yellow lever. Um, that, that's kind of changed over the years. This is a mechanical power takeoff. Um, others are electric, but always know where that is. Be comfortable with your other controls and the functions of the tractor before you get started. But most importantly, your seat belt before you take and operate this tractor. Only put your seat belt on if your rocks are in the upright position. Uh, if the rocks happen to be folded down, I know a lot of folks like in orchards and different areas like that, maybe low hanging trees, you want to put those down. But if your rocks is down, leave your seat belt off. All right, so that I know as a kid and growing up on the farm and with my grandpas and my dad, uh, I spent a lot of time riding right there on the fender of the tractor. Now, nowadays we kind of look at things a little bit differently um, and know just really how dangerous that was. I know it's easy to say, oh, well, I survived and I did it. But you know, <coughs> all it takes is one little hole and that kick can come flying off of there and they're right underneath the tire. Um, these are my two kids, Ella and Bryson. You want to say hi? Hi, uh, hi. And I definitely want them around a long, long time. Uh, so, and another thing to keep in mind as your kids get older and they get curious and they see mom and dad do things around equipment, they want to imitate and do the same. So it might even be important to take the keys out, <coughs> excuse me, hide those, uh, and, just, and just keep those little ones safe. 
like you said, the rake just kicked loose there a little bit. Uh, all it would take would be a kid to be on that tractor to hit the lever and that could drop. So uh, make sure your safety features are in place. Keep your kids safe. Now we do have some other tractors with cabs and training seats with seat belts. Uh, the kids do spend quite a bit of time with me in those. Uh, but I try to make sure that we're on safe ground, whether we're working ground or, or just trimming brush hogging in the hay field, ground that's flat and, and lays good. Um, and we never want to take them out on the hill or where there'd be a chance to roll over or out on the main road or the highway. Uh, so again, keep your kids safe, keep them interested, and they'll continue the tradition. Talking a little bit about power takeoffs and power takeoff safety, it's really important that you have these shields in place. I know you noticed on the vehicle or on the uh, in the video earlier that everything was uh, spinning, but this this shaft, that the steel shaft that actually runs the power takeoff, is inside this shield. So if you were to bump up against it, it would stop and wouldn't entangle you. Um, others are designed a little different. Some may have a chain on that that would go up and hook to keep this stationary um, while the power takeoff is, is engaged. But it's always important to watch that power takeoff. Watch your piece of equipment. Um, a lot of farmers are bad about like hay balers getting off something jams. They want to crawl underneath of it while that power takeoff is engaged. As you can see, it can be very easily um, pulled up inside the machine. Uh, also, there's other safety features uh, on this baler. Another safety concern that a lot of folks have with round balers would be having something plugged up or clogged and they would get in underneath the tailgate of this. Um, this baler actually has a safety latch for the hydraulics. You can isolate, isolate the system in, into the lock position. Uh, that way if someone would happen to get in and, and hit the lever, this will not come down. So now it would be safe to get in and clear a clog. It still makes you kind of uneasy and I don't recommend it, but uh, do take, take precaution and use those uh, safety features that you have. It's important to spend a little bit of time with the owner's manual. Look at your equipment, especially if you get a new piece of equipment and what you need to do uh, to be able to operate that safely. All right, I know we've been talking about power takeoffs and how the controls in the cab or the operator station may look. Um, this tractor, it's a yellow button. Uh, you just pick up and twist to turn it on. But it's important to know that whoever's around the tractor or may be helping you with it, that they know how to disengage that power takeoff. Simply just hit it and that will turn, turn it off. But that may save a life by being able to get back here and get that power takeoff turned off if an accident were to occur. Another question I get a lot of times is, what tractor should I get? Well, I guess I kind of turn that question around to the, the producer or the farmer is, well, what are you going to be doing with it? What do you want? Um, sometimes it comes down, comes down to the money and how much that you're willing to pay for that tractor uh, and, and what you can afford. But I would definitely recommend getting a tractor as, as big as possible to do the job just simply for safety reasons and weight. Make sure the tractor, the wheels are set out to a, a good, safe, desired width, especially if you're going to be operating on hillsides. Um, the little tractor up there, I know you're not going to be able to see it from here, but we've got front weights on the front of it. So if you're moving round bales or something of that nature, you've got that weight on the front to counter counterbalance and keep that tractor safe. Also with the rocks, a cab is a really good option. Again, I'm not trying to be a salesman, but for skin concerns, skin cancer, also if you've got kids, the enclosed cab is a good safety feature to have and really well worth the money if you're going to spend 10 or 12 hours on it a day. Um, do you want a front loader? Do you, do you, do you, what do you plan on doing? Do you need to move compost? Do you need to move a little bit of dirt? Do you need to move round bales? Uh, you know, loaders are very, very handy, but a tractor's not a bulldozer, so that's something to always keep in mind. Uh, as well. I'm happy to answer any questions. Please feel free to contact me. 
um, and, and we can work through it and, and make your tractor purchase uh, the most economical and feasible for your operation. Thank you.